go live. Good evening and welcome to the May 24 meeting of the Montgomery County Historic Preservation Commission. My name is Bob Sutton, I'm the chair, and I'd like to begin by asking commission members and staff to introduce themselves, starting on my left. This is Commissioner Doman. Jeffrey Haynes. Julie Pelletier. Michael Galway. Mark Dominiani. Uh, Dan Brukert, Historic Preservation Staff. Rebecca Ballow, Historic Preservation Staff, joining remotely. And uh, Michael Kine will be joining us shortly also from Historic Preservation Staff. Thank you very much. The first item on our agenda are historic area work permits and have the permits or have the projects been duly advertised? Uh, yes, the notice was in the May 10th edition of the Washington Times. Thank you. So we're starting with um, area code work permits 2A at 6950 Carroll Avenue, Tacoma Park, 2D at 26 Quincy Street, Chevy Chase, 2E at 7419 Baltimore Avenue, Tacoma Park, case 2G at 12535 Millstone Manor Lane, Germantown, case 2H at 7107 Sycamore Avenue, Tacoma Park, case 1I, or excuse me, 2I at 2240 Brigton, Brigton, yeah, Brigton, Brighton, Dam Road, and Brookville. <coughs> case number 2M at 5 Montgomery Avenue, Tacoma Park, and case number 1N at 109 Elm Avenue, Tacoma Park. Mr. Chair, hearing no objections, I move that we approve the following historic area work permits in accordance with staff reports based upon the record before us in consideration of the recommendations of the local advisory panel and including the conditions recommended by staff. Hop number 1025550 at 6950 Carroll Avenue, Tacoma Park. Hop number 1028602 at 6100 Connecticut Avenue, Cherry Chase. Hop number 108877 at 26 Quincy Street, Chevy Chase. Hop number 1028636 at 7419 Baltimore Avenue, Tacoma Park. Hop number 1030740 at 12535 Mil Milestone, Millstone Manor Lane, Germantown. Hop number 1029627 at 7107. Sycamore Avenue, Tacoma Park. Hop number 1029036 at 2240 Brighton Dam Road, Brookville. Hop number 1030121 at 5 Montgomery Avenue, Tacoma Park. And hop number 993041 revision at 109 Elm Avenue, Tacoma Park. Do I have a second? This is Commissioner Pelletier, I second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. All these projects have been approved, and I thank the um, property owners for bringing projects to us that can easily be approved. Makes our lives a lot easier. Now, the next item on the agenda is case number 2B which is deferred from the April 26 meeting at 12 East Melrose Street in Chevy Chase. Uh, this was deferred because we were waiting for a comment from the LAP. We received a comment, and at this point, I would welcome a motion on this project. The, the L, well, the LAP uh, said that uh, they, they approve what the staff recommended to us. And so... Uh, Actually, uh, just to jump in, Mr. Chair, uh, the um, LAP recommended to approve the HOP as proposed um, with the, the caveat that the four-foot-tall picket fence be painted. 
the original staff recommendation was to limit the placement of the six foot fence along the side of the house. And uh, the LAP's justification was that several six foot tall fences have been constructed between houses in Chevy Chase so that this proposal would not disrupt the open character of the district. Thank you. Can I ask a question? You can ask a question, yes, absolutely. Um, do we know how high the existing fence that's running perpendicular to the house, how high that fence is? It appears to match the height of the existing five foot tall picket fence. So it's, a, it's approximately there. I think it varies slightly with the minor shifts in grade, so it's about five feet tall. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll make a motion. Um, <clears throat> I move that the Historic Preservation Commission, in accordance with the standards set forth in Section 24A of the Montgomery County Code, approve HOP number 1028583 at 12 East Melrose Street. Um, including the staff recommendations of items number one, or conditions, right? staff conditions number one, proposed four foot picket fence needs to have a painted finish. And condition two, with a amendment, I would propose that the um, left, proper, left property boundary match the height of the existing front fence and replicate the design, the open picket design from the um, back wall plane to that existing fence. Thank you. Can, can I ask, does that mean that the fence would be five foot approximately? Correct. Okay, so this is more or less what the LAP is asking for. Yes, but the, except they were asking for the solid fence. And so, uh, Commissioner, just to clarify, so the the LAP was um, endorsing the application as proposed for the fence in the the side and rear yard. So they were endorsing a, a six foot sandwich board fence uh, throughout. But this is for the extension that goes forward of the rear plane of the house. Is that correct? Correct. And that'd be at five foot and open. Correct. That's what I'm proposing. You would, would you mind restating your, your, uh, the conditions on your uh, motion? Sure. Um, <clears throat> that we approve this hop based on uh, staff conditions. Uh, number one, the proposed four-foot picket, picket fence needs to have a painted finish. And condition two, that the left property boundary match fence match the height of the existing front fence in height and also the open picket design. Thank you. Is there a second? This is Commissioner Doman. I'll second that. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Aye. This motion has been approved. The next item on our agenda is item number 2F at 104 Water Street in Brookville. Is there a staff report? Um, I do have a brief staff report. However, the applicant was initially planning on attending remotely. I just want to see if, if he has uh, signed in. Um, he has not been able to join us for the meeting. Um, so we can either have a, a brief staff report and, and discussion with him in absence, or we can move to the next agenda item um, as you know, chairman's prerogative. Um, I, I would say we go ahead with this. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm fine with that, uh, unless anyone has any objection. Um, this is Commissioner Doman. Do you have an objection, sir? I would like um, to not accept staff's recommendation. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not there yet. <laughs> We're not there yet. Is he um, having technical issues? Or, or I don't is know. It just I, not here? I mean,. We so, we sent him the invitation. He um, they just they just had a new addition to their family. Oh, this right. week. okay. Yeah, um, like a, yesterday. So right? he indicated he would <laughs> certainly try to yeah. that he no, would we get that try to join remotely. 
they had not, you know, necessarily planned to attend for this small item. Um, so we sent the meeting link. Um, it seems he hasn't been able to, to join us yet, but that also was not unexpected. This was John Liebert's case. John had spoken with the applicant who had indicated he, he was fine with the staff report and, you know, conditions as written, but he does not seem to have joined us for the team's meeting. So I'll That's turn fine. it back to Dan so, for the so, staff update. Um, Commissioner Doman, um, if you can hold whatever your <laughs> objection is. The, the only objection that I will accept at this point is an objection to not proceeding with this case, which I don't hear. So <laughs> if we can have the staff report. Give me just one second, Chair. All right, um, so this is hop number 1017737 at 104 Water Street in Brookville, which is a secondary resource. Um, constructed a Dutch colonial house constructed circa 2003. The proposal here is the construction of a rear deck. Um, the applicant proposes to install a uh, timber tech by Azek deck. Um, along with a railing and stairs necessary uh, to satisfy all code requirements. So the staff recommendation included four conditions. Um, the applicant has agreed to adhere to them. Uh, those four conditions are uh, that the all materials of the deck, including the flooring, fascia board, railings, skirts, balusters, shall be a millable, millable cellular PVC uh, with final review and approval delegated to staff. Um, submit additional specifications for the stair and landing with final review and approval delegated to staff. Um, include a site plan, elevation, and, or annotated photograph that shows the location and dimensions of the deck in relation to the house. Um, and then to amend the personalized deck designs to note that these drawings are illustrative and that no alterations to the fenestration or materials of the house are proposed. Just going through quickly, um, the drawings show a reconfiguration of the, the rear door, and we want to ensure that, that door, changing that door is not considered as part of the top. Um, that um, the, the, I think the, the larger one is that the applicant proposed to use a composite material for the railings um, because that is something that is physically interacted with um, people. Uh, we recommended that it be a solid millable PVC um, uh, material which has been consistent with staff's recommendation um, for all historic properties in the Brookville Historic District. Any questions for staff? Discussion? Yeah, this is uh, Commissioner Doman. Commissioner um, Doman. Thank you. <laughs> um, I guess my, my, only, my only comment, I guess, on this particular one is that the applicant asked for a composite handrail. And um, being that this is a fairly new home in the area, I understand this is in the historic district, and it's on the back of the house. Um, I just thought that this may be over-restrictive. I would, I would be willing to uh, go along with the homeowner if he wanted to use a... Um, composite material for the handrail and the, and the railings. I don't see any reason why we couldn't do that. However, in view of the fact that the homeowner has apparently agreed to use a millable PVC, um, uh, I, I guess I can go along with all of that. I agree with uh, the conditions, uh, the four conditions that have been set for this under staff recommendations. And my only comment was I would I would be more than willing to agree with the homeowner and allow him to use a composite material for part of for that. And I, I think he accepted a PVC for the decking. I think that was uh, something he agreed to. But um, but in, in light of the fact that um, if he's willing to go ahead and use PVC, millable PVC for everything, that's fine with me then. But I would I would like to see us be a little bit more consider on some of these homes, which are really are not very historic, being built in 2003, um, I'd like to see us um, think more about some of our requirements that we put on the people. Anyway, that's all I have to say. 
Thank you so much. Any other comments? Commissioner Pelletier. Commissioner Pelletier. <laughs> um, this is purely a architectural comment. It's been my experience that the composite railing sag. So I think it's a good recommendation to go with the PVC purely for from a from a durability point of view. But but I do tend to agree with Commissioner Dolman that because this is a non-historic addition and a non-historic deck, that we should give more leeway to the owners. But I would suggest to use PVC because I think it'll last longer and look better. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? If not, uh, Mr. Chair, <coughs> I move that the Historic Preservation Commission approve hop number 1017737 at 104 Water Street, Brookville, um, based on the four conditions recommended by staff, numbers one, two, three, and four, as illustrated in the report and other conditions uh, stipulated in the report for drawing submission and any changes uh, to be approved by staff. Do I have a second? It's Commissioner Pelletier, I'll second. Thank you, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, this project's been approved. Uh, case number 2L at 7325 Carroll Avenue, Tacoma Park. Is there a staff report? Uh, a brief one, Mr. Chair. So this is hop 1030069 at 7325 Carroll Avenue in Tacoma Park. It's a contributing resource to the district and is a Dutch colonial revival house constructed between 1915 and 1925. The applicant proposes to um, undertake railing alterations from porch repairs and rehabilitation, uh, a, a new storm door, and installing new gutters. Um, the house rises significantly from Carroll Avenue, so they're removing and replacing the partial pipe metal railing and installing a full length pipe metal railing, and then doing a number of repairs to deteriorated features on the porch, um, including um, the railing and, and balusters. Uh, there were a couple sort of there were, there were a couple conditions that were added just to ensure um, that the, um, the project's description is, is matched by the final submitted plans, including uh, the applicant shall submit detailed specifications, which include dimensions and profiles for the balustrade on the front porch and the rear balcony that demonstrates it matches the existing. Uh, the applicant shall submit uh, spe specifications including design dimension, material of post caps for the new post at the front porch. Uh, the applicant shall clarify whether the rear balcony balustrade requires additional uh, post. And uh, condition number four is the applicant shall add a note that a perimeter wood trim board will be replaced in kind. And I will answer any questions that you have to the best of my ability. Any questions for staff? I have one. Um, Commissioner Haynes. Commissioner Haynes, thank you. Thank you. Um, it, I noticed that there's rotting beadboard ceiling and handrails and pickets are, is the proposal to replace in kind, i.e. wood, or are they, or, or don't we know, or are they looking for a composite material? So those are, the proposal is to replace those elements in kind, which is why there's no analysis in them, because Technically, those don't require HPC review or, or even a hop. Um, they are eligible for the historic preservation, the county's historic preservation tax credit. So um, it's, it's good that that's included in the scope of work for the review and, and the approved hop will also provide the applicant with um, sort of a receipt that the HPC reviewed and, and, and approved them um, instead of a, a staff in kind determination letter. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Doman. Um, the applicant has said that they would replace in kind, which I assume that means they're going to replace with wood. Um, if, if they were to deviate and use a PVC material, 
um, a millable PVC material, like for the decking and or for the balustrades or for the railings, would that also qualify? If if it's if the HALP was approved with those conditions, would that qualify for um, tax credits for them? No, that would be replacement with a new material. Even if it's approved by us? Yes. It has to be a repair or replacement in kind to qualify for the tax credits. And that's, that's why, I mean, that philosophically, that's why the tax credit exists, because the, the government recognized that maintaining a historic house often requires more maintenance and additional expense. So that tax credit, the 25% county tax credit, helps to shrink the delta between um, those substitute materials and, and a traditional material. Is there, um, is there any requirements as to how the beadboard ceiling of the porch has to be done? I mean, it looks like to me, uh, there's a lot of deterioration on, on the beadboard, and I assume it's a uh, thin tongue and groove, something like that. Is, can that be replaced with a different material, or does that have to also be done in wood? Well, so a different material would require that to be disclosed as part of the historic area work permit application, which is not the case here. So um, it's a different, that would be a different proposal which would require further analysis. Um, a replacement in kind, again, does not require a hop review um, because it is just a replacement in kind. It's replacing like with like. So um, that, that material, um, you know, did not, in, there was no analysis for that included in the staff report because you're replacing a historic material with a material that replicates all of the characteristics of that historic material. As a, as a, <laughs> as a comment on this thing, in, in preparation for this meeting, I visited. Um, um, can we have comments when we have comments, <laughs> please? Okay. Thank you. Um, any other questions for staff? Okay, I have um, property owners Janet Hostetler and Anil Chatterbetty. Are you all here? Um, if you'd like to come forward. If, if you could take a seat here at the table where the microphones are, and if you could push the button uh, till the light comes on and give us your names. Um, you'll, you will have seven minutes if you'd like to do a presentation. If you're not interested in doing a presentation, uh, if you'd be willing to answer questions, that would be, that would be good. So. I, I'm Janet Hostetler. I'm Anil Chaturvedi. Thank you. And we are available for questions. Available for questions. Are there any questions for the property owners? Uh, Commissioner, Commissioner Doman, Doman. Um, how long have you lived in the house, if I might ask? 13 years. 13 years. Have you done any other major wood repairs on your house since you've owned it? The front porch is original, the back balustrade, everything is the way it was when you bought it. Is it right? Is that probably not original, original, but no, not original. you have not had to do anything we to it. Not. The only thing is that we did put in the storm door that now needs to be replaced. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Commissioner Galway. Commissioner Galway, uh, you, you say here that you would replace the black pipe rail with a pipe rail. I assume, or just to clarify, are you intending to repaint it the same, same color? Yes. All right, thank you. Any other questions? If not now, <laughs> I would be happy to welcome comments and discussion. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not, in preparation for tonight, I went out and visited the, it's called Edgewood 2. It's at 16101 Oak Hill Road, Silver, Silver Spring. Is that the one? No, it's not the one. <laughs> Can't help you. <laughs> Um, 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 um. Uh, the one that's run by the National Capital Parks and Planning Commission. Um, it's on our agenda here. 
Um, Commissioner Doman, that's case 2G, Pleasant Fields, the Basil Waterhouse. That's it. That's it. 2G. Okay. In, in viewing that, um, there's, there's a lot of deterioration. This is getting off the, a little bit, but there's a lot of deterioration in the tongue and groove flooring that's, that's on this particular house. But what I notice is the, the beadboard that is on the ceiling that's above the porch, okay, in this particular residence, which is um, historic residence, um, it was laid out with gaps. And I'm not sure how this came about, but there'd be a board and then a gap and then a board, then a gap and a board and a gap on the thing. Normally, beadboard is put together because you got tug and groove and it fits in tight. And the problem with all that is that if the roof leaks, you get water sitting above the beadboard, it gets in amongst the tug and groove and causes all the stuff to rot out. This particular application that I saw, I think was looks like a great idea. And I'm not sure who did it or why it got done or how it got approved or didn't get approved, but it's on this particular house and the whole ceiling on the porch, uh, uh, ceiling the, above the porch, has a board and an air gap, a board and an air gap, and it allows air to get up in there and dry. So um, I'm not sure if this is something that is required, that it has to look exactly like it was, or this is something that maybe the homeowner could do to alleviate some of the problem with moisture uh, accumulating above the top of the beadboard. So I, does the staff have anything to say? Um, I believe that is not part of this project, correct? Correct, and and altering altering that would require altering the proposal would require additional analysis from staff and and a hop, and and a hop or a revision right. to this hop. Yep. So as it stands right now, the Th that is not that this is not part of the application. No, but they would have to replace it as is then. Well, we we don't know because we haven't come to that point yet. That's not part of this application, right? No. Isn't the beadboard in there? It's described in the scope of work, but it is not subject to HPC's review because it is replacing material with an exactly matching material. So it does in not require. So it does not require a hop. Yeah. yeah. It it can be. It, let me let me see if we can explain this correctly. If something is completely in kind in this sort of a project, it can be a staff review. Uh, that's correct, Mr. Chair, and, and actually it would be a staff review and we would write a letter that states no hop is required for this work. Right. So, so they would get a memo from us that waives the hop requirement if, if there is something that is happening in kind, um, which is separate from the staff level approval of categories of work that were approved three and a half years ago. Um, so those, those are instances where th something does require a hop an in-kind replacement requires no hop and no HPC review. Okay. Okay, thank you. Any other, any other comments? Questions? If not, <clears throat> then I move that the uh, Historic Preservation Commission approve the following hop number 1030069 at 7325 Carroll Avenue, Tacoma Park, um, based on the conditions, uh, staff conditions. How many were there? Four. Four, Four conditions, thank you. Um, <clears throat> and the additional criteria outlined in Chapter 24A, B, one, two, and four, and the Secretary of Standards, two, five, six, nine, and 10, and conditions for uh, drawing submittal and any changes be reviewed by the staff. Is there a second? It's Commissioner Domino, second. Thank you. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, the project's approved. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for coming. And thank you for giving us a project that we can easily approve. <laughs>
Uh, yes, there is, Mr. Chair. Um, this is Edgewood 2. You'll see the photo on the right is from our slide collection, and this is what the house looked like sometime in the early 1980s. So just uh, by way of background, on May 18th, 2022, the HPC denied a hop to remove the existing porch decking and replace it with AZEC, finding that the material did not accurately reflect the characteristics or appearance of wood. Uh, that decision was appealed to the Board of Appeals and in a split decision, two to two, um, their, their tie upheld the HPC's decision. So again, um, Edgewood 2, it's a master plan site that was placed on the master plan in 1981. The house was constructed circa 1858 with later additions. And uh, the approximately seven and a half acre site, which had been more than 140 acres, I believe, um, was added to the master list for historic preservation for its association with the Stabler family, who is a prominent Quaker family in the area. Um, that's criterion 1C. Uh, and for its vernacular architecture architectural development because it was built in a number of phases under criteria 2A. It has also been determined eligible for the National Register but is not listed on the National Register under criterion A for its association with the Stabler family and criterion C as a good example of a mid 19th century uh, vernacular Greek revival farmhouse. So it's reviewed under Chapter 24A and the Secretary of the Interior Standards. For our purposes, the most pertinent ones are in front of you, uh, 24A8B1 and B2, and the Secretary of the Interior Standards 6, um, and we'll circle back to those as needed. So the applicant proposes to remove the existing porch decking on both the south and west facing porches and replace them with erratus tongue and groove porch flooring. So the question for this preliminary consultation is whether erratus is an acceptable replacement material for the existing wood tongue and groove porch flooring at the subject property. And uh, on the right is a representative image of uh, an erratus porch decking on a historic Victorian era house in Alabama. <coughs> so uh, this is the view of the house from the main road. It's, it's some 200 feet. I'm sure the applicants can, can fill in the exact distance, but it's, it's some distance set back from the street. Uh, on the west elevation, it's much closer to the street. It, there are a number of outbuildings, but we're not focused on those today. So um, again, some of these are actually recycled from last year. Uh, staff made a visit in October or November, and the conditions have uh, deteriorated a bit since these images were taken. So you can see there's some degradation and, and rot on, on the porch floorboards. Um, this is at least the second porch since the 1970s. Um, so there's, there's an ongoing issue. So just by way of background, the HPC first considered substitute materials appropriate for building additions and new constructions in districts and at master plan sites because the materials were determined to cl uh, closely approximate the appearance of the traditional materials like hardy plank siding and ASEC, architectural shingles, aluminum clad windows were some of the earliest substitute materials approved by the HPC. Um, in addition to approximating the appearance, these, um, these materials were a way to differentiate the new construction from the old, consistent with standard nine. So the HPC has not approved substitute materials on the historic construction at master plan sites where there's a tactile interaction. Um, so, so any place that you would touch or step on, um, we're, we're also concerned about the, the feel of, of the material as well. So the HPC has approved some of these materials such as trim or roofing on building additions at master plan sites, but again, not, um, not in, in a porch decking. So the HPC has also approved erratus in select locations on buildings in historic districts, um, but those always have been adjacent to new, either new, con new construction or building additions or on non-historic building elements, not in uh, replacing a historic building fabric. So the existing wood porch flooring was replaced several years ago and it's already showing signs of degradation and rot. There are some signs of drainage issues around the porch that may be contributing to the deterioration. Um, and, and just a reminder, standard six states that deteriorated distinctive materials should be replaced uh, with a material that matches the design, color, texture, and where possible materials. So staff finds that tongue and groove wood flooring is widely available. But staff also finds that the quality of wood today is much, much lower than the wood that was available even a few decades ago. 
or maybe even one decade ago. Uh, a 2006 preservation brief on preserving historic wood porches provides some guidance and encourages authenticity and material integrity when maintaining and repairing significant historic properties. So the proposed material is Aratus. It's a solid PVC material that has been approved in limited instances to buildings in historic districts, um, both in Montgomery County and, and throughout the country. It has not been approved at any of the county master plan sites. So Aratus is um, one of the better materials at holding a finish, including paint, um, better than any of the other substitute materials that we've examined. Uh, during the work session, uh, we talked a little bit about substitute materials, and I mentioned that it's all but impossible to keep up to date on, on what these materials are because they're manufactured. It seems like there's a new one out every month or, or even more frequently than that. Um, but because Aratus is solid, it doesn't swell or absorb, absorb uh, excuse me, it does not swell or absorb moisture, and it feels more like wood than any substitute material that his staff has examined. Uh, we solicited comments from the Technical Preservation Services branch of the National Park Service, um, specifically on the use of Aratus, but also soliciting some other comments on substitute materials. And they were unable to identify an instance where Aratus had been approved in a federal rehabilitation tax credit project. Um, the rehab tax credit program is an optional financial incentive program, whereas the county regulatory program is a mandatory under county code. So just there is there are some differences that you're agreeing to enter into uh, the federal rehab program where you have no choice if you're a designated property under the county. So uh, the National Park Service staff indicated there were instances where applicants were encouraged to not use wood and instead use uh, what they identified as an appropriate substitute material. And they also noted that these instances are on high exposure elements. So the HPC um, in its evaluation should consider the building's architectural significance and style. The exposure and damage caused by environmental factors, um, just to note that these, uh, the two porches in question face south and west, so they are um, highly exposed to the sunlight. Um, the quality of wood available. And uh, the final question for consideration is, does the HPC consider Aratus to be an appropriate material in this specific instance? And I will answer any questions that you have at this time. Any questions for staff? Commissioner Haynes. Um, would, would the staff say that the porch would be a painted porch, historically speaking, or would a, a natural wood or stained wood be acceptable? Um, you know, in, in historically, paint is, is the appropriate material. That's a sacrificial surface, so paint protects the, the wood underneath. So um, staff's recommendation is that it, it be painted. Um, that would also help its appearance uh, appear consistent with a historic wood porch. <clears throat> Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Um, yes. Just uh, w one second, Mr. Chair. The applicants did bring a couple samples, and I'm going to pass those around as you ask. <laughs> Great. As, as you ask any questions. So there are, there are two samples. Oh. One is a tongue and groove, and the other is a plank flooring. So we'll let you evaluate those as you ask questions and deliberate. Commissioner Dominiani. Yes, hello. Uh, this is Commissioner Dominiani. Thank you. This may end up answering my question, but you noted that this is a tactile uh, element of, of the structure, and therefore it should feel like wood. And I was wondering if anyone has experience with erratus underfoot. And, uh, and if so, if you could provide commentary on that. I'm getting the sense, actually, that it is quite solid and good. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, <laughs> I, I think you can actually, you could step on that to, to get a sense. But I mean, it, it, feels, it feels solid and durable um, as, a, as a solid material, not an open cellular one. Sure. Commissioner Pelletier. Take your shoes off. <laughs> uh, which one are they using? The tongue and groove. Uh, well, or, or, or they, they may have some okay. things to fill in. Oh, 
Yes. I don't think you can put a cap on it. You can. Here's another tongue and groove. Or that is tongue and groove. I'm sorry. That's, yeah, this is tongue and groove. Okay. I have a question. Uh, any, other, any other questions for staff? I have Commissioner one. Pelletier. Thank you. Did you look at other things, other products? So we've had extensive discussions with the applicant about um, what materials are on the open market and, and what other materials could meet their, satisfy their needs. Um, you know, again, they, they came in for a material that we identified as, as or recommended that the HPC identify as, as not compatible. Um, in other discussions, we talked about a coya, which is um, a treated wood, and, and that would be, we would consider that a wood replacement. Um, the applicants in their accompanying narrative identified um, the ongoing maintenance required with, with a coya and, and determined that that was not something that they were interested in pursuing. So we've had a, a number of discussions over the last eight months or so um, since the, the Board of Appeals decision um, with multiple members of, of the staff. Okay. I'm just curious how this product differs from other, and is it a PVC product? I mean, it is. It's a, it's a solid. It's a solid PVC. It's mm -hmm. not a composite. Correct. Okay. That was my question. All right, thanks. Any other questions for staff? Oh, my goodness, she's got another one. <laughs> Commissioner Pelletier. This may be a question for the owners, but this wouldn't qualify as a tax credit it would not. thing, right? Exactly. So so whatever we approve, whether we, whether we approve it or disapprove it or whatever, this is something that the owners have chosen to do and not claim for tax credit. Correct, credits. it's a material change. Okay, all right, thanks. If there are no more questions for staff, I would, uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Commissioner, Commissioner Galway. Commissioner Galway. Um, you m made reference, I think, as the National Park Service about high exposure elements. Is that foot traffic? Is that rain? Is that sun? What, what do you, how do you define that, just so I understand? Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> so, so uh, you know, that was also um, the, the specific staff member that I sort of had some back and forth with also identified that um, in many instances, where a historic wood storefront was being replaced, that he would advise against using natural wood um, just because of the exposure to the various elements, even though it may be underneath a, um, excuse me, some type of overhang or signboard. So I, I think high exposure means all of those things. Um, you know, in this case, I think the, the primary concern would be ultraviolet degradation, just because it's south facing and, and west facing. Um, you know, the, the porches have covers, so rain is less of a concern. Um, but I, we did see some, some moisture um, concerns around the porch. Uh, the other thing that I'll note is that Aratus is actually approved to be installed directly over a vapor barrier. So rot is not anything that, you, you would be more concerned about the, the structural supports underneath and the, the actual decking itself. All right, thank you. I think we've pretty well hit everybody here. So if the owners could, owners and the represent, representatives could come forward, that would be great. I have uh, Lisa Berry, Barry Godelski, and Stephen Godelski. And we can have all or some. <laughs> And if you could um, give your name, uh, turn on the microphone, give your name for the record. Uh, you will have seven minutes for a presentation if you'd like, or you can answer questions or both. <laughs> okay. My name is Lisa Barry. Uh, My name is Stephen Godelski. And Barry Godelski could not make it. He was not feeling well tonight. Okay. So um, would, you, would you like to do a presentation yes. or would you like to, yes, yeah, so thank I you. Just, I guess just give you some idea about our, all our research. Um, the 
present porch has only been there for five or six years. The porch before that that we had put on only lasted about five or six years. And that's when I said to Stephen and Barry, I said, what, what's happening with these porches? Why are we rotting out, you know, so quickly? And then, you know, we just find that when it rains sometimes, the entire porch will get soaked with water because of the wind. And uh, so it, it's just not, it's just staying wet too long. I've done extensive research on different woods and uh, it was suggested maybe look at the Akoya, but uh, the it's very uh, labor intensive to, it says to clean the, that wood twice a year at least, if not more. And then, you know, they recommend an oil finish, but if you don't use an oil finish, they say use a primer and another, uh, paint on it and it just it would just continue to be needing to have that uh, applied every year um, you know we've looked at other woods and I found an article where a woodworker uh, carpenter he just reviewed all the different woods and they suggested cedar or cypress and they only have a three to five year lifespan in in you know wet under wet conditions. Um, we chose, we researched a lot of these uh, new products that are on the market. And I think what drew us to Eridus was the fact that, uh, for one, it's paintable, so we could paint it any color. They have one of their product, two of their products are paintable. The wider tongue and groove, uh, they have a wider tongue and groove, which is pre-painted, but it comes in a, do you have that one? It's a, a darker gray. Um, but it's been designed, uh, this old house endorses it where, and talks about how it uh, truly matches the look of the historic uh, porches and everything. And there is a, uh, it was used on, um, the Oak Alley, Oak Alley Plantation in Louisiana, and uh, which is in the National Historic Register, and um, they did all their porches in that. There's a, I found an article where they just did a historic uh, preservation of a large home, and not only did they use this product on the porches, but they used it. Uh, they, they make shutters, they make beadboard for the ceiling, and they used all three products on this house. And it, I couldn't find it in the National Historic Register, but it was a historic house that they just want to preserve. So um, we just want something that's just not going to be continually rotting out and having to replace. We've We've done so much on this property as it is. It well exceeded our budget. Um, and we've got outbuildings in the house that will continually need painting over the years or staining. And But we just want something that we can use that will not be uh, need replacing every five to six years. Did you want to add anything, Stephen? Just trying to cut down on maintenance, please. A lot of maintenance out there. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any questions? Commissioner Doman. Um, it looks like you did a lot of research on this, and I appreciate all the time that you put in on it, and I appreciate you brought the samples in. I, I did see your, your presentation, your report, and you looked at several different products, and I'm glad you got the samples because I was thinking about getting the sample so I could look at it too, but but it was, thank you for bringing it in anyway. Um, is, is this floor, is the decking actually on the ground or do you have a frame, do you have um, like structural support underneath it holding it up? Two by 12 is below it. Two by 12, and you're fairly close to the ground, I take it? There's about four to six inches off the ground. And is that just? Um, the porch showing here has two step, one or two steps up to it. Just two. It's two steps. And the south, the west porch has a ramp that goes up to it. It looks like, okay, this, in this Less view, you're, you're pretty close to the ground right yes. here. 
I assume it's you all stone do you have a, a vapor barrel or something underneath there too, um, and then gravel on top? I believe there was. We did that back in 2007 or 2008. We took it all up and replaced Is uh, You can answer this question either or not, but I was wondering, <laughs> is the cost of this product, which I don't have a clue on what, what it is per linear foot or for to your porch, is it twice the cost of doing it with um, like, a, uh, like a wood, or is it similar in cost? I didn't get a cost for the n regular wood, but I, I did compare it to a Koya, and the, um, if you add in the fact that we have to paint the Koya, it's almost half as much as what the Koya would cost us, because if we get the unpainted product where we paint it ourselves, the paint is free. There's a rebate on the paint. So it's actually almost half as much as what Akoya would, would cost us. And you said this is your second porch. This one lasted five years, and the previous one lasted. Uh, what was, what material, what species of wood did you have originally in the first time and then the second time? Do you know? I believe it's pine for Yeah, bed. it was the best pine we could get. We primed it both sides, and it just is buckling. It's, I guess it, I, my guess is it was put together too tight, but the, the south porch originally had one by sixes on it with a little gap, so I think that had a little more air circulation, but right. when we replaced the side porch, the west porch, we replaced them both with the same material. I, I, I did, lack of air. Is I did drive cool. out and take a look. I mean, I can only, I can only see from the road, you know, to look in and see. Do you have carpeting on, on? No. There's no. A, there's a, the uh, zip. Zip wall system is the base under there on the left. Oh, this, this green There's that no, I see right here, that's not a carpet then. No, yeah. that's zip wall. There's zip wall, sheathing. okay. I understand. There is no there's no porch decking on that section. With a it, piece of plywood we totally top. Rip, we totally rebuilt that left-hand side, the eight-foot, two-story addition. Oh, okay. So it you're... All, you're f it was structured improperly. Rather than having tongue and groove, you got a piece of five-eighths or something like that. Yeah. Plywood down there. Two pieces. Two pieces. Thank you. Any Next other questions? Time. Commissioner Galway. Commissioner Galway. Um, just a couple questions about the, are, are all the porches that you intend to replace, are they all uh, tongue and groove? Yes. And, and you will, and so your suggestion or your, your hope is to replace that uh, with, with, a, with the, um, this, how do you say it, Eritus? Um, product tongue and groove as well. Well, either the tongue and groove, or they have that porch plank, which is the other sample. So we could do a, you know, where we'd have the gaps in between. I understand. The and only then, problem being the porch plank is only in twelve foot lengths, so there's a little, too much waste. So we probably have to go with this, the wider tongue and groove. And that was the second por portion of my question. Then, the is the existing wood plank. Pine, I guess, is that the tongue and groove that's there? Is that was that matching the original, in any way? Not when we it, bu bought the property. The pro when we bought the property, it was uh, one by have. six, one by six on the south porch. Pressure pressure treated lumber on the oh, porch okay. is when we and bought. And then there was some there was some tongue and groove, two and two inch, on the west porch, but we only put that down because it was under. Behind the door, there was an original porch that went around the corner. It was an L-shape, and you could see it poking out from under the wall. So that's what we thought we should replace it with. But in looking at the pictures, the south porch was one by six, which was older. This side is 1905. Okay. We have followed all the guidelines and all the other restoration of these of the house and all the six outbuildings, um, but uh, I believe that when this, the people that owned it before, I'm not sure that they got any approvals when they did things, and 
I think that's why we had pressure treated lumber on the mm -hmm. porches at that time, you know, when we bought the property. And it was in, they were in very poor shape, everything, when we bought the property. So it's, you know, we're just trying to eliminate having to continue to spend, unnecessarily spend money on the house. We feel like if we put down the eridus that it'll last much longer and not have the constant upkeep that wood requires. Commissioner Pelletier. Uh, thank you. Um, how is the structure holding up? That's fine. It's fine? Yes. But you just keep getting this, like, the wood on the deck it's just like keeps the, it's rotting. It's like the water's puddling on top. Uh, but, okay, so you don't have to, none of the joists or anything. No, the joists were all replaced back in 2008. Hmm, that's weird. The, um, the, be the columns are all redone. They were V-wedged and, and But everything's holding up. It's just the porch decking yes. that you can't. There is a little, on the far right side, there is a little rot in the column around the corner of the fascia. But that because the gutter goes through the uh, oh okay through the roof. I don't know if this is a proper material. I'm just curious if you all looked at ePay. Yes, I just did recently research all of that, and first of all, they recommend oil, a UV oil on it, and I watched a video where this guy put the UV oil on about six different types of ePay material, and then he left it out in the sun, and within 12 weeks, it had just totally faded the color out of the wood. And then, um, you know, we don't want to not put something on it because it discolors to that ugly gray, and then it'll just be uh, unevenly this colored because the sun hits it some parts of the porch and not mm -hmm. other parts of the porch. Yeah, so okay. it'll just I was just be, curious if you I had did. I just at it, yeah. finished this week doing a lot of research on ePay because that was a uh, suggestion that Rebecca Ballo had made, you know, to look at that product, but it's la it's labor intensive too. It takes a lot it's, of It's extremely labor intensive. Yes. I was just thinking in terms of tax credit if you if there was a wood product that you could use. We don't really care but, uh, about the tax okay, that's credit fine. because... That's fine. <laughs> it's um, like, if we have to do this every five and six years, it's like do, getting the tax credit is really not our doesn't goal. doesn't really we help just, you. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Thanks. Okay. Right here. Commissioner Doman. Yeah, you, you kind of already touched on my question is there's, there's an economic trade-off if you use wood you can get the tax credit but then you're stuck replacing it every five to six or seven years and you, as you have said you have moved beyond the belief that a tax credit is going to help you you want a material that's going to last longer and so the tax credit is if you go with this material the earth is, is going to you won't be able to get the tax credit so but that's okay uh, from personal experience, um, I have done a deck in Cyprus. I'm, I'm, I'm a retired carpenter, okay? And I've done a lot of historic preservation work. I did a, I did a deck with Cyprus, and the homeowner, it was tongue and groove, painted, primed, the whole thing, before, every board was primed before it went up. Stainless steel, nails, installed, and sanded and painted, and it lasted five years. I mean, the homeowner was very conscientious. The, the homeowner specified Cypress, wanted Cypress, bought the Cypress, and did all the painting on it. I just had to do the installation, plus all the framing was shot. Okay. So Cypress, even though it appears to be a good product, my personal experience is maybe five years, maybe six years, seven, seven years. I've done a deck with ePay, Okay, again, it's labor intensive, but it's still there. Okay, so, but it's a very hard wood. It's very hard to work with, very hard wood. Um, and I think the cost 
for that is, uh, you know, I'm, if I'm a carpenter, I'm not paying for it, but it's, it's probably prohibitive uh, in your situation anyway. So um, I feel sorry. I mean, I, I understand where you're going, and if the tax credit isn't a major issue, I, I can understand and uh, go along with this product, I think. Thank you. Questions? If not, uh, we'll start deliberations, and um, I think you've been here before. <laughs> uh, so what we will do is give you what we think, and um, hopefully it will be something that will be um, have some consistency. Uh, you're not required to do what we say, but a lot of times it doesn't hurt. Um, and so um, I will ask uh, if anyone wants to lead off with uh, making a recommendation here. That's what I mean. Discussion <laughs> and recommendation. Commissioner Pelletier. Thank you. Um, it sounds like you've done your homework and looked at everything that's on the market. And I think these, I think these products are pretty nice. I know this is kind of a, uh, it's sort of a big deal, isn't it? I mean, you know, but it, I mean, it's hard to, I, I feel your pain. I have an old house too, and, but I have a north facing porch that I don't think gets the elements like your porch does. Um, it seems like you have, like just judging by the photos, like the mold and stuff that's growing, I don't know, I, product wise, I'm a little bit on the fence here, but I wouldn't do the tongue and groove again. It seems like you're gonna, you're trapping water. But we've maybe been told that if you if you do the spacing, then you have to worry about the water that does get through and underneath. We there is some waterproofing. Did you want to look? At I know it? there's yeah, something under there, but I haven't. I like this stuff. Yeah. I haven't seen exactly what's under there to know that oh. all the water that comes through the porch is gonna. Come out. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't know <laughs> your house, but uh, but I, I think this stuff looks pretty good. But so we're going to be kind of setting a precedent here, correct? Um, no, not well, necessarily. Case case. Case well, by that's case. true. Case we by do, case, we take everything case we by do case. Not have, we, it is not a precedent. We don't do precedent. <laughs> well, we can, but this this I would say is not a precedent. Okay. And, and Commissioner Pelletier, just to jump in, this is something that the commission could direct staff to go revisit in six and 12 months and report back. So, you know, this is something that if the HPC really wanted to consider it, they can consider it and state at the hop stage that this is being done as a test case. Um, and, and then, your, again, your decisions are informed by your previous decision, but they do not set precedent. And, and if I could just add, there is no... There is no absolute with this. In other words, we can't. We can say this is fine for this house, for this house, yeah. or not. In other words, it's not. We're not saying that this has to be done with every house, okay. or it ever has to be done again. <laughs> <laughs> it is a case by case, and we can we can recommend that this is good for this product or this is not. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, I, oh, I had a technical question that I forgot to ask. Am I, is it too late? No, oh, go okay. ahead. No, that's fine. The pattern on here, or maybe somebody can tell me, is it, is it a pattern? Like, does it repeat? Because that's part, one of the issues with these, with these products is that they press the grain in, and as you, as you put it over a large surface, you start to see the patterns in the grain. This, this one actually is better. For I think it is. I think one, it is. This one has a better pattern. But I'm curious how it re how much it repeats, or can or do you know? I, I mean, I think that's something that we can find out for the at the hop application, but I don't have that information, and and did not find that information. Okay. All right. Well, just from these two samples. <laughs> yeah, do you wanna, um, here, I'll give you back that one. Do you want to look at that? One? I I mean, I know I just said don't do tongue and groove, but I, I think this looks pretty darn good. So I could support this. Um, I feel like this product has been picked in good faith. I think the owners have done uh, their due diligence. We could try both products, one on each porch. 
<laughs> True. Um, See how now I we hold can up use them as a for your pig, future reference. <laughs> I, this is a tough call, but I could support this this um, application. Anyone else? Um, I'll jump in. Um, Commissioner Haynes. Thank you. Um, I too, given the conditions of your specific porch um, being close to the ground. Um, the exposure to, uh, I don't know the, the orientation per se, but I believe that you get uh, rain on the porch um, and, and the sun, um, so it's, it's a, a tough environment. I think the tongue and groove painted would very closely match the, a wood, a natural wood, but painted. So you will have painting maintenance. Um, and the, uh, particularly that the end grain is exposed and that will need to be painted so that you don't get the uh, variation that you have in the deck, in the deck sample. Um, but I, I could support the tongue and groove uh, in either width um, would be fine. And I think in your instance, it would be a complementary material uh, architecturally, aesthetically, but also functionally um, be there for many years and help you guys out from a uh, maintenance cost perspective. If, if I can just jump in for, for one, one other second. Uh, Commissioner Haynes, they do make a, a small cap piece to go on the, the end. The, so you don't actually see the, the tongue and groove um, because that's the one element it doesn't fit quite as tightly as, as natural wood. So there is a, a trim piece that can be added to the, the installation that sort of caps it. Um, for a hop, I, I can make sure that we have at least representative images of that. I think they want to see the end that they know it's time. Well, that's the question. Would the original porch have been a, a end grain? I mean, this is what's showing on the photograph. That doesn't here. bother us. That's so, so the painted this is, end grain wait, looks Wait, this is Rebecca. Jeff? Sure. I'm sorry. This is Rebecca Ballow. I'm going to jump in because I've seen some of these products. Hi. I know. I'm I'm beaming myself in. Um, part of the issue, and I and I I'm sorry. I can't see what you have up there on the dais, but I have seen some of the products. Um, you know what Dan was saying. We conditioned that that end piece to be on a piece of a of on an erratus deck on new construction. Tongue and groove construction will snap tight. It's meant to because it's meant to prevent the water from from coming through, and that's what that tight tongue and groove joint does. I could be speaking out of turn again because I can't see it, but my understanding of seeing the joints in the erratus is that there is there are gaps there, which is fine because in the material you you know, you may not you know it's you don't need it because it doesn't function the same as wood. But that's you also don't know. But you can also tell it's not wood because because of the gaps. See? But that was in the tongue and groove joint and not in the planking. Turn it. You turn it the other way. There, that's there. Mm -hmm. that's you see it? Can you see it? Okay. Right. So you see how that tongue and groove joint doesn't, there are gaps there because mm -hmm. it's not, right. wood yeah. wouldn't have that same kind of a gap. So that's the impetus for the staff condition that we had on that other erratus deck that we did approve because with the bull nose you won't see that gap that you don't have with a wood tongue and groove floor does that it sort does, of answer it, what you were uh, getting uh, at uh, the only rebuttal is that uh, you probably do get gaps in the wood after about two years <laughs> right. you will have gaps right. yes Especially so, yes, so it starts to it, it warps uh, right it will move exactly. so yeah, sure. but your point is well taken i wouldn't myself get too carried away if if we all feel the cap is a better detail but i'm i'm also fine with the end end grain cut anyone else yes uh, let me just get before we before we get to let me just yes, yes. commissioner doman that is commissioner doman um how is this material fastened to the joist how do you how do you However, physically the attach it? it tells us to fasten it to the joist. Pardon? I don't know. Screw, screws. Is it screwed? Nailed? Mm -hmm. Stainless steel nails? Uh, pre whatever. How do you handle it? Whatever they recommend, screw. you know, it's screwed on. 
I haven't really, we haven't really looked at the details of installation. We just <laughs> want to get it approved first. We haven't gotten that far as, you know, those huh. details, but. Well, sometimes tug and groove can be um, nailed. nailed in above the tongue okay. at an angle, but sometimes you can face nail. I'm just curious on how it's, what, what it is, because generally you would use like a stainless steel shank nail with a small head on it, but then they have to be set in. I was just, do you, well. We would do whatever their installation instructions. Yeah, some installation of that. Installation isn't the problem. Well, it will affect the appearance. I'm just curious. Maybe we'll call you and ask you to help. <laughs> I just wonder how it's set in, because it, my experience is that when, when I set them in, um, I countersunk them, sanded, and, and you never, they weren't visible. Yeah, this leaves, uh, it's like here we left a little. Well, that's just me putting the sample together. Oh, you put this in? Yeah. Oh, you put that. You yeah. shot it in with a yeah, pneumatic just, nailer yeah. then. Yeah, yeah, we just did that for the meeting here. That was um, just, it's, that's not, so you could you see a sample. Just, just curious, um, because it will affect the, wanna, the appearance, but anyway. Um, I would look forward to getting well, that information. Make, not questions. Okay. Do you have I mean, comments? Do you, you have something? Okay. Commissioner Galway? It's Commissioner Galway. Um, I, I think that in terms of if there, if it sounds like you don't have a lot of good historical data on what might have been there originally because you had, you had some kind of pressure treated wood or something. My thoughts would be if, you know, if, if you do have a photograph, you could match as close as reasonable, maybe the width. Uh, of, the, of the tongue and groove, I think that would, in my mind, be preferable. Um, in terms of, of the product, um, you have a good case here. You know, every four or five years, you're replacing the deck. So, I, I mean, that's 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 ridiculous. You know, it's unfortunate. And, and so I think in this case, I would not vote this as a precedent, but in your situation, I certainly <laughs> could support, you know, support it. And, and the good thing about this is it is reversible. So, you know, if, you know, at some point things change. We, you know, they could always go back. To, you could always go back to wood, or a future owner could go back to wood, or whatever. So, so I think I could support it. Anyone else? Okay, Commissioner Pelletier. <laughs> Super quick. Um, I'm curious about this end gap, this capped piece, and uh, there isn't any information in the. Um, Is there anything on the back of any of the samples? Oh. Is there a piece of? The reason we didn't present that as an option was because we didn't feel it was historical to have an end cap. So right. that's why we didn't. Well, that's my question, is that a lot of times with this, with, with the substitute kind of stuff, they, they do that. They give you, like, these pieces to cover up the evidence that it's not wood or whatever. And that's what tends to make it look, like, we, not historic. Right. We could use a band board. We could raise the band board up on the outside. I guess, yeah, it doesn't really bother me that much. I just, I, I would, I think I'd almost rather see this than yeah, see, strip of see like an OG piece on the, like an edge band or something, which is not particularly the historic detail. So I was just curious about what that looked like, but I'll leave that up to staff. <laughs> Yeah, we can pull that from a previous staff report. Um, sure. I'm going to ask Commissioner Domeniani if you would if you would weigh in because if we have five people, then they will have a sense of what's going on here. So if you wouldn't mind, that would be probably helpful. I wanted to add that I, uh, this is Commissioner Domeniani. I'm a relatively new addition to the commission here, but this is the most thoroughly researched preliminary consultation I've attended so far. <laughs> and I wanted to commend you very much on watching the videos and putting these samples together. And I, uh, maybe I'm drinking the Kool-Aid uh, offered by Aratus, but in the marketing material that I've reviewed, I think that it, it looked pretty good on some of the historic mm -hmm. homes that they've demonstrated down south. And, and I think here as well, uh, I have some similar pain to you of replacing something every five years or every six years and, and, and seeing, seeing that and seeing that this could perhaps alleviate some of that. Uh, I, I would be uh, inclined, like Commissioner Galway said, to support such a thing in a non-precedent setting, setting manner. Um, and it's nice of you as well to volunteer to be guinea pigs for us in the county. That's great. And, and I will support it as well. Yeah. So I think you've, <laughs> hopefully that would be helpful to you. So okay. thank you so much for coming. Um, I you. think we're looking forward. Actually, you know, this is something we wrestle with. And so uh, I think it's very helpful, uh, hopefully to you, and hopefully it will be helpful to us uh, to see how this works. So thank you so much. Look forward to seeing the hop.
okay. historic area work permit. Thank you all. So Thank you. What can I just ask? What our next step is? Do we go then? To <laughs> okay. Or go to Rachel. It has to be Rebecca. like approved through halt now. I mean, approved through the HBC now or. No, what happens, you, you put a, a, an application in as you would normally, okay. and uh, it'll come before us. And I it would be probably about a month, I would say. It'll okay. take about a month. So you get it in as quickly as you can to staff. They'll put together a hop. And it usually, you have to, we have to advertise mm -hmm. it and then hear it. But we will, we, I mean, we have to, it has to come before us because it's a different, it's not in kind. That's why it has to come to us. Okay. Okay? okay? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Do you need any of these samples? Okay. Oh, do you want your <laughs> goodies back? <laughs> uh, next next uh, project is uh, 3C at 3930 Washington Street, Kensington. And is there a staff report? I see Ms. Ballow there. How are you feeling, by the way? Are you, Good, are you about 80%? Yes, I <laughs> Maybe a little more, but thank you. Good. Um, I do have a, a staff presentation. Um, one moment, let me share out my screen. Second. Okay, is this visible for everyone? Can you guys see this okay? Yes. Yes, we can. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So this is the preliminary consultation 3C for 3930 Washington Street in the Kensington Historic District. Okay. There we go. So some background information. This is an aerial photograph. The property is marked by the yellow star. This is a primary resource within the Kensington Historic District. It is a shingle style house constructed circa 1898. Standards of review for this project are chapter 24A, the vision of Kensington and the Secretary of the Interior standards for rehabilitation. Again, this is another aerial photograph um, showing the rear yard with the non-contributing garage, the patio, and some of the other features, including the driveway. So the proposal this evening, um, the applicant wishes to demolish the existing deck and cellar access on the rear elevation of the house, construct a one-story rear addition with a rear porch, demolish the attached garage, and install a shed 10 by 10 in the rear yard. These are some photos of the non-historic garage to be demolished. Within the staff report, there is an image of the historic Sanborn map that did show an earlier garage or auto dependency that was located further back in the rear yard that was demolished before the district was established. So this is just the site plan showing the existing two-story frame dwelling, the footprint of the new one-story addition with the porch, the existing garage to be demolished, and then over on the left, the proposed footprint for the new 10 by 10 shed. These are the elevations of the proposed right side elevation, proposed rear. Again, these are all in your staff report, but I have them here in the PowerPoint that we can come back to them at any time for discussion. This is the proposed left elevation. And then here are 3D models um, zooming around around the um, the proposed rear elevation and and the sides. Um, I point this. I'm bringing this view to your attention in particular. Um, it sh does show with the proposed hyphen that the or the proposed hyphen and the rear addition that the the wall is proposed to be coplanar with that of the existing historic house. However, the applicant is proposing kind of an inset or a, a notch, if you will, within the soffit. Um, I can't quite measure this out from the drawings. It appears to be anywhere from, you know, six to eight inches to, to 12 inches of an indentation. This is one of the items um, staff is requesting HPC's deliberation and discussion on this evening about whether or not this notch um, in the soffit or in the eave line is enough of a differentiation for the new construction. So I can come back to this slide as well. So preliminary staff findings, staff finds that the demolition of the non-historic garage, rear porch, and cellar access is consistent with applicable guidelines. 
Um, for the rear edition, we'd like to start this off with a discussion of concept scale and massing since this is the prelim. So staff finds that the hyphen and the gable roof edition are consistent with applicable guidelines and compatible with the historic resource. Um, and staff finds that the scale of massing in the addition would be subservient to the resource. It would not adversely affect the surrounding district. In particular, the fact that this is this is a one story addition that's proposed that does a very careful job with where the new roof line of the hyphen hits vis-a-vis -vis the existing rear elevation and that the rear gambrel roof form is still very clearly expressed as that's a character defining feature of this house we think it did a really nice job of that um, staff would recommend that the HPC discuss, as I just said, this lack of a setback on the actual wall, the plane of the addition um, from the plane of the historic house on the east elevation. Again, staff finds that this was a successful differentiation of the massing with this one story addition um, and that the recessing of the eave is also um, a way to further distinguish the new construction. Um, staff finds the proposed design of the addition to be compatible with the historic house in the district further in terms of the proposed windows. Um, the windows on the side elevation match the design and fenestration patterns of the historic house. There is a bay window, for example, on the historic house that is replicated on um, the opposite elevation so it provides some visual interest without being an exact you know replication of the pattern down down the plane of the elevation um, and also due to the limited number of new windows on the proposal that sort of lack of differentiation there's not a lot of new window forms that are proposed we think that is appropriate um, and the fenestration on the rear elevation would not be visible from the public right of way so staff finds um, that the proposed materials that have been submitted to date are compatible with the house and the district, except for the composite porch flooring. So as we've discussed quite a bit this evening, the HPC regularly approves the use of cementitious fib fiberboard siding and polyvinyl chloride trim. While the applicant proposes a slightly different siding reveal than the existing home to distinguish the addition, staff would recommend further analysis on this point. It's a small addition. Um, we are of the opinion that the material should clearly differentiate the, the siding or, or match it in kind. Um, we think this is of particular importance again on that east elevation where there's just a proposed continuous wall plane. Um, and also this elevation has no vertical trim proposed where the historic building and new construction joins. So we can talk about that. So staff requests the HPC's feedback on the demolition of the rear porch, the cellar access, and the non-historic garage, um, overall compatibility of massing scale and form, compatibility of design and materials, and the replacement of the, the staff's recommendation to replace the composite porch decking with wood decking. And I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions for staff? We are feeling sorry for you, dear. <laughs> <laughs> no. Thank you. Thank you for presenting. No. We appreciate it very much. Um, okay. Um, if there are no questions for staff, I would invite the um, owners and owners' representatives to come forward. And uh, I have two names. I don't know if uh, I missed a couple. <laughs> I have John and Iris Schwabe and Jody Longo. And if there are more, that's fine too. But we um, we need to have um, do we need to have a record of everybody, Kevin? Okay. Do we have a record of all the speakers? And they can introduce think, themselves okay, again great. when they speak. Okay. Um, so you can do a presentation. Um, you'll have seven minutes, and um, you can do a presentation or answer questions, whatever your preference. And if you could, uh, you, I think you've seen the drill here. If you could um, state your name for the record um, as you speak. Uh, that would be great. And you just push the button on the microphone until the light comes on, you'll okay. be good. Yes, I think we'll just do an, a, a very brief introduction instead of a statement. But Jody Longo, the contractor for the client. Thank you. I'm Iris Schwabe. I'm John Schwabe. I'm the owner. Thank you. I'm Glenn Canencio, architect's team. Okay, perfect. Great. And I would just like to share that um, the owners have been in the home close to 40 years. And uh, having had the privilege to come before the Historic Commission and work, work with staff on over a dozen projects, <laughs> I would say they're the poster children for 
maintaining uh, the historic integrity of the home. On the outside, definitely, with all the wood windows, there's not a few months that go by where you don't see them out there scraping the wood. Uh, and I've had the privilege to be inside and see that they've done the same thing. They've taken all the paint off the wood, and so they're the real deal when it comes to people who want to preserve the historic integrity of the home. Um, they're at the crossroads, like many of us are, in trying to figure out uh, the next chapter of their lives, whether to you know, downsize, move, or stay in the home they obviously love so much. And so that, in, in large part, generated the need for uh, more, more accessible space in the home and a one-story bedroom and bathroom that's with openings that's very accessible. So that's what's before you right now. Would you like to add anything? Okay. No. <laughs> Are there any questions from the commission commissioners? Commissioner Haynes. Um, my question is, um, <clears throat> first of all, it, it is a magnificent home, um, shingle style. It's clearly you've maintained it well over the years. Um, and my question is uh, kind of your decision to add on versus maybe utilize some of the ground floor spaces. Uh, there's a living room and a family room in the ground floor. Um, had you considered maybe to use, um, I believe it's the family room that's adjacent to the kitchen as perhaps um, converting that into uh, a, a bedroom area uh, so that you could reduce the size of the addition. And then the addition itself, how, how were you thinking about the, the roof form in particular? Because um, I find the roof of the addition somewhat at odds with the uh, historic structure. Well, <clears throat> talk about the using the living room and the dining room as, uh, as bedroom. We, did, we didn't want to do that because we also needed a full, full bathroom with, uh, that's uh, certified for accessible, accessible right. ba bathroom. So, um, and if we felt that it was going to, we love our living room the way it is, and a dining room, you know, formal dining room, not 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 the uh, open footprint print that seems to be how a lot of the houses are today. <clears throat> I don't need the microphone. Yes, do you do. If you would, please. Okay. Uh, so uh, there is a real serious interest in maintaining the house as unmodified as possible. Uh, that's one of the reasons to maintaining also the floor plan and the space configuration as originally as possible and not reoccupying it. Uh, we were at some point discussing how do you make an accessible uh, bathroom inside within the space and there's much, so much modification to the structure that actually starts affecting the uh, nature, historic nature of the structure because it's not only the, the solid visible, it's also the space. So with the addition in mind, there's also an addition, Will, um, how do you maintain the original um, facade and elements to the extent you possibly can? So we found that small um, overhang, it's called, technical call here, There is, this, there is the main roof and there's the small overhang that is the termination at the base of the roof. And that, extending that into the addition will be a nice point of connection. And at the same time, it's a low slope. So if you use a low slope and you extend that, that low slope and you create a lower ridge, then we're trying to avoid modifying the rear window maintaining that, and a very important point, that's the bedroom upstairs, and that brings a lot of light, natural light to that space. So if we 
try to keep the new roof away from the rear wall. We use a low slope and we have to be slow to, to stay below the seal of the window. Then we do not modify windows on the rear elevation. At the same time, that allows you to disconnect like uh, the, the addition to the house. So it's not like an extension of the house. It's just another piece. It's, it's connected, but it's, there is a good transition uh, that is visible from, from outside. Uh, that's the main that's the main reason for using the transitional low slope, and it's also kind of the extension of that small overhang around. Thank you. Any other questions? Commissioner Doman. In the um, three-dimensional drawings that you have, on the, on the addition, there's the, the hyphen area, which is a very low slope roof, and then there is a, another gable roof that's over the, the bedroom, I guess. And you show two small windows in that area. Is, that, is this going to be like a cathedral ceiling in this area? We hope. We hope, and we're proposing a cathedral ceiling, a little ceiling there. Okay. From a floor plan, you can't tell, but yeah. since I can see some little windows up there, it looks like you had uh, That's the idea. idea letting some light into this area then, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. Commissioner Pelletier. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner oh, Dominiani. I'm going <laughs> to. Here we go. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for presenting these drawings, and thanks to the staff for the for the presentation as well. Um, I'm noting the uh, left side wall continuous with the existing family room across the new master bedroom closet into the new master bedroom, uh, being one straight plane across the existing home into the new uh, proposed structure. And on the other side, where the kitchen, mudroom, and breakfast area are, there's a slight indentation further differentiating that hyphen. And I'm noting here that perhaps there would be room for a similar indentation on that other side, uh, with it being a part of what appears to be a small hallway and closet awesome. with an entrance to the basement below. Perhaps it could be matching on left side and right side to further differentiate the new part of the structure from the older part. Um, since there had been concern raised, it seemed like around having one straight plane uh, from, from the existing home uh, onward uh, into the new addition. And um, I, yeah, the question would be like, had you considered uh, that type of what I was attempting to describe just now? Yeah. <laughs> and if so, uh, or uh, perhaps what drew you away from it? Yeah. yeah so I would say uh, that's the staff's question to the committee. And that was long discussed among the team, the owner preferred to have that space for the closet, but uh, we will pay attention to the recommendation you provide. I was, um, so. so since um, we might be, uh, we might need to use a wheelchair or a walker, I was hoping that we may have a little more room to, um, to storage you know, all the, the aids that we need for when the time, time comes. Hopefully we can get away from that. I would just add that um, it's a good, great question. Um, the, the driveway side, or um, that would be the west elevation, is, is much more visible from the streetscape. The east that you've just asked about with the plane being the same, is not visible really much at all. Um, and in addition to what uh, Mrs. Schwabe said about the, the need for um, wheelchair access and circulation, there is an existing very large uh, opening in the dining room that we, are try we would love to be able to maintain for circulation and entrance and exit from that space. Thank you, I appreciate the comment. Commissioner Pelletier. Um, the, the 3D drawings don't have, they're nice, by the way, very descriptive. Um, they don't show any materiality. And so I, I think um, it would be helpful to know how you're going to 
handle with this straight wall going across, how, how the materials will change from the old house to the new house, if you're going to have some sort of transitional element there. Um, are you continuing the same siding all the way down? Like, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, sure. Um, part of it is over the 20 or so years we've worked with the commission, sometimes it's changed. So often they, you've really asked for some distinct distinguishing factor like a vertical trim board. Other times you haven't. Sometimes you want it to really complement the old and other times you haven't. So we're really here on a research mission. Um, and, you know, having been around the block before, we're going to listen to our marching orders in terms of is fiber cement siding okay, the reveal you prefer, wood versus, you know, composite. But that being said, we would really like to hear at this point in time the Historic Commission's preference with something like uh, Rebecca mentioned, like a vertical trim board. Is that m mostly preferred at this time? Uh, to distinguish old and new, or is it is it not? I think it's a case by case yeah. basis, and it in particular here. I think um, my other question is: Is there any magic to where the basement stairs are placed, or could you move them back a little bit and put the basement door? Like the basement door, is there some strategic? reason it is where it is, or could? It's very flexible. It can be okay. moved back, it can be sweet, flipped. Okay. You know, if the start of the stair is better, closer to where the original house. Yeah, there's just ends, not a lot. the other direction. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, there's not a lot of relationship. Like, I feel like the other, the elevation where you have the door going in is, it's just a bit more articulated and maybe designed than the other side where you've got the basement stairs going down. So that was my question is, uh, is that sort of malleable there? And it sounds like it is, yes. depending on what we decide. Thank you. No, oh, he's got a question. Um, well, first of all, did you oh. have anything? Commissioner Galway? Oh, okay, let, let me get him first, then I'll get you. <laughs> Thank you. Commissioner Galway, uh, have you thought about the material that's gonna go on the roof of an addition? It's, uh, the Yes, and one question. Uh, so the material is, uh, the recommendation of the staff is to match uh, the existing roofing material. However, in the low slope roof, yes. if we have to go low, the main intent with the low slope roof is to not touch the window, the rear. So at some point we'll have to go so low that maybe shingles will not comply. That's the reason We have I to was, go to a membrane. Yeah. I was concerned about that. So that's our that. question. Yeah. Is that, will that be acceptable? Will that be, because it is, it is the trade for respecting the window. Yeah. No. Well, we'll have that Otherwise, come. if we go yeah. with shingles, we have to go on a, on a higher slope and we have to just remove it and change it. Well, once we, we ask, our, ask our questions, then I think we'll have a chance to, have some, yeah, to, right. to weigh in. So that was the only question I had. Thank you. Commissioner Doman, question? Yes, this is Commissioner Doman. Um, I guess I have to follow up um, with like Mark Domenini's comment about um, moving moving that area that's where the, the closet is located. I'm looking at the floor plan right now of the addition that's underneath the low slope roof. Um, you seem to have quite a bit of room in there and it seems to me as if a slight indentation of maybe a foot or six inches or something like that would be a good good move to differentiate it. And I thought, was that not also a staff recommendation in your previous consultations to, to make a, a delineation by moving that wall in a little bit? Anyway, that's I'd like to see that and I think you said that, is there some issue with the Maybe a wheelchair access to that. It looks like to me there's plenty of room, though. Is that correct? To get in and out of that area? There's a, like a little walk, and then there's a closet on the floor plan mm -hmm. off the master bedroom. Okay. Are you talking about the notch? Yes. Yeah, I'm talking about moving, it, moving that wall in right side? there. Yes, yeah, on the east. To on the so east side we, that we, we have do one on, on the uh, mm -hmm. west side. 
Yes, we have one on the west, and the commissioner, I believe, is asking about, this one, about this one. Near the basement stairs. Yes. On, this, on the other side. Right. Just, to, just to match the indentation of that, even if it's not as deep. Okay. It could be, um, so the good thing I'm hearing is it doesn't need to be as deep as the other one. Pardon? The other one is a deep recess on the west side. Yes. We just need to show the indentation without necessarily matching the depth. Oh, you don't have to surfaces. match the depth, no, but, but a, a, a recess would understood. be nice. Yeah. I think okay. I that. Thank you. No more questions. We'll start a deliberation. And um, I think you heard previously, um, this is a really, I think, a, one of the real wonderful things that we do. I'm going to brag. <laughs> um, we have uh, some of the really, really good people on our commission who have done a lot of really good work. And usually, I think not usually, always, I think our recommendations are good. Um, you don't have to follow what we say, but uh, it's not a bad idea. And uh, we, our purpose is to try to get projects uh, to the point where they're very easy, easy for us to approve when they come before us as a historic area work permit. So uh, with that, uh, I think it might be helpful, uh, Rebecca, if you could uh, post the questions that you had proposed to us. And I think that would be probably the easiest way for us to, to uh, deal with uh, recommendations, discussion and recommendations. Sure, no, discussion no and recommendations. How's that? Can you all see my screen okay? Yes, yes. we can. Thank you. Great. Okay, yeah, Commissioner Pelletier, thank you. I had a question about why the seller is not a defining feature. I guess I should have asked that before. Um, so that's a little bit concerning to me, but for, for the four questions, I guess I, if, if staff doesn't feel that the seller access is, if getting rid of that is particularly heartburn inducing, I can go with that. Um, I mean, I think, do you want me to, do you want me to address that? Yeah, could you address, I thought maybe question sure. time was over. Sure. No, um, if, if that's all right with the chair. Okay. He's okay. <laughs> Um, One time. The, the seller, the, the seller access, you know, imagine like if it was a coal chute too, it's certainly um, an original feature. It's not necessarily a character defining feature though, that type of seller access. It's a very utilitarian access door, right? Again, for coal delivery or, you know, vegetable storage or any other kind of, just a different kind of basement door. Um, so it's on the rear. So it's not visible, readily visible at all from the right of way. So that's one consideration. We don't consider it to be a character defining feature of the architecture of this primary resource, which is a shingle style resource. And even again, if it were, I'm going to take this a little bit further. Imagine if there were, you know, another important feature on the rear. Well, actually, in this case, you don't have to imagine the um, the gable end of the gamble roof that is on the rear, that is a real character defining feature that we would encourage be preserved, even though you really only perceive that mass at oblique angles and honestly not at all because it is kind of obscured from the rear. So all of those factors put together, staff didn't have a concern about the removal of the cellar doors. Okay, I'm convinced, thank you. Um, no problem. I, uh, I think it's a nice addition. Um, I. I I do have concern about, um, I think the placement of the basement stair is a little bit random. It, I would like to see it pushed back further away from the original house, because I think it's getting a little muddy as to, like that whole side, because you're not setting it back. I do think there's room to, to get a deeper hyphen in there I do see what you're saying about the about the the ADA access, the wheelchair access, and everything. I get that, um, but I I think even if you didn't push it back, you would want to do a vertical piece of trim, just because the addition is going to move differently than the rest of the house, and you're going to end up if you do something that's continuous all the way across, you're going to get cracking and various things in that. And I do think it would just look better to have some sort of vertical piece that separates the, the old from the new. So I, I would like to see an indentation there, 
like you have on the other side, but but I I could live with a vertical a vertical break between the old and the new, and I would like to see the basement stair just pushed back further towards the back of the addition, just so that it doesn't muddy its location with the existing house. Um, compatibility of design materials, sure. Uh, composite porch decking, I don't have an issue with that. I think we just had a conversation about that in the previous case, um, and it's becoming an issue with a lot of these houses. So I think, for me, I, I, could, I think this is approvable with some, some minor alterations and some, some more differentiation between old and new on that whichever side, the left side um, of the house. So thank you. Commissioner Haynes. Uh, thank you. Um, um, I'm, I'm totally fine with uh, removing the rear porch, uh, the cellar access, and the non-historic garage. However, I find the massing um, not compatible. I find that the massing of the addition, particularly the uh, the main roof over the, the bedroom mudroom, um, the way it is offset from the, the uh, bay window is, is compositionally not very complementary to, to the uh, historic structure. I, I think the addition looks too much like a very contemporary uh, bungalow or, or uh, the the in particularly the the clear story windows um, have no relationship to the historic house. Um, I I don't support the project as currently uh, designed from a massing perspective. Um, um, I find the low slope roof of that main roof um, not a pr appropriate for for this house. It's just not an addition that complements this beautiful shingle-style house, and I, I would uh, feel that um, it's, it just needs more development. Um, perhaps the, the fact that the hyphen is low-pitched, and then you have the rear porch that's low-pitched, and then this taller center roof um, does not work well from a massing perspective, in, in my view. So um, with regard to differentiating the uh, addition on, I guess that was the west side or the opposite the driveway, you know, maybe that's the opportunity to uh, maybe push the addition out to the side yard because you have plenty of side yard on that side and maybe alleviate this sort of long uh, uh, facades that are, are created. But I, I just find the addition to feel very, very different and uncomplimentary to the historic house, and I think it would be a shame to build it that way. Anyone else? Commissioner Galway? Commissioner Galway. Um, just to kind of react to the staff's questions of us, um, I could support the demolition of the rear porch, the, uh, the actual cellar access, as well as the non-historic garage. I don't have an issue with that. Um, I, I think in terms, we've seen a lot where, you, you know, you're trying to build a two-story and the, the ridge line is, is approaching the top of the, of the original building. You don't have that situation here. But I do agree it's that, that I'm not a fan of these very flat roofs. I would not support a membrane roof. Um, and so it, I think there's some work to be done to try to figure out how to, how to, how to make this all work. Um, we were asked to react to the, the coplanar wall. Um, I think the idea of having that roof trying to create that notch, and I think it's on the east side, um, I'm not a fan of that. I, wanted, I personally would want to see an actual reveal in the wall itself, um, and, and similar to what you did on the opposite side, and then pull it, pull it back out, I, I understand. But right now, you know, if you're looking at that wall, you're not going to know where the original home truly ends and where your addition starts and that's the purpose of this is to create a separation so that it's clear to even a novice that this is in fact the addition to the original existing home so um, I, I would much rather see a notch of some sort at, at, on, on this side as well to, uh, to basically differentiate between the old home and the addition um, 
And uh, I guess the only one question this statement, the bullet item to replace some of the composite wood decking with wood decking. Um, is that written correctly? That the, the composite porch decking with wood decking. So is that the is that the intent? Is to it, is there currently um, composite porch and you're replacing it with wood, or is it wood being replaced with composite? I read it exactly. The yeah, I know. You're right. You're right. I think I don't, I honestly don't know. I think. Yeah. I understood it to mean the uh, new rear porch. Uh, again, in the rear, we were proposing possibly a composite like the air. That, that's, radius. I think, the way we read it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it seems like may, it, it may not look like that, but the, I think that's the staff, how we the, the staff is recommending that it, the staff recommendation is that it be wood. Ah, okay. Yeah. okay. So we're okay. asking right. the HPC to, to react to Thank you. that direction from okay. the staff. Sorry for the confusion. No worries. And I, I mean, from my perspective, it's on the back. I, I would not be a, you know, that would not be something that would stop me from approving it if you can resolve these other issues that I that I brought up. Thank you, Commissioner Doman. Yeah, to beat this again, um, I, I have no problem using a composite material on the back deck and that was your recommendation I know what the staff has recommended would you if you sat through our previous consultations and deliberations we've talked a lot about this this is an issue that's before us right now and we're still working on it. but as far as um, the point of the composite deck I would support that it's on the back of the house um, I have no problem going with that I don't see any need to use wood decking for the issues the issue that uh, Commissioner Haynes brought up about the roof, um, I think is a valid concern. I have no suggestions. <laughs> and it does look a little odd when, when I saw that. I was wondering what in the world is going on with this thing. The floor plan is nice. I mean, you've got the bedroom there, you've got the bathroom there, you've got the big closet there. I think you worked with the floor plan nicely. Um, I support that, but there's just something odd about this roof on the back of this new addition that, that maybe you could use some more architectural dreaming on this thing and come up with something, I think. Um, I think it needs a little, to make it more compatible and more interesting. Um, that'd be my comment, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, um, let me jump in here. Um, I, uh, we've <clears throat> actually, uh, several of us went out and looked at uh, a number of projects that we've done over the years, and I think <clears throat> we sort of came to the conclusion that a six inch setback just doesn't work very well. <laughs> it just doesn't differentiate enough. Um, a foot seems to do a good job, but we also decided that um, a vertical board does probably as much, if not more, than a six inch setback. So. Um, I would recommend looking at either putting a vertical board or a, or a foot setback. I, um, everything I think other than that, I, I do not have a, a big problem with, but I do agree with Commissioner Haynes about the massing. I really think you need to spend more time, uh, particularly I think looking at a, at a roof design that is more complementary to the house. I mean, the house is beautiful. It's a wonderful, beautiful house. The roof really is an important part of it. And I think this uh, addition just does not uh, complement the house. So I think, I don't think it's a, it's not, I don't think it's a, a serious design issue. I think the, you know, the size of the addition uh, the way it's the, the purpose of it, the way it's the way it's functioning, I think is fine. But I just think the uh, uh, need to spend some more time on on designing, especially the roof um, on the addition. And I think that would really really improve this project. So unless we have any other any other suggestions, comments, thank you so much. And we yeah, if you have questions, that's fine. And and also, um, let me just tell you that that um, the whole record of this of our conversation, we have the whole entire record. The um, staff has that you can meet with the staff. But if you have a question for us, that's, we'd love to be able to answer it, hopefully. Yeah, sure. The um, 
you know, what really drove the, the unique roof line here is the desire of the clients to really maintain the beautiful light that comes through all those three windows on the right. rear. The, the easy thing to do would be a, a somewhat of a replica of the gambrel roof, you know, in the addition. When you have been seeing one-story additions before the commission, is it to sort of replicate in a complementary way the, the existing roof line? Um, it's hard to imagine anything else we could do um, that would, A, leave the light of the windows, and B, you know, I want to hear from you, a gable roof, a gambrel roof, uh, if, if the clients are, are, you know, willing to give up some of that light in the rear of their home, what kind of roof line, uh, saying this isn't good and this doesn't work, that I understand that, but that's a hard one. That's a hard curveball to leave with. You have quite a challenge. <laughs> um, partly that's the reason why I think offsetting the addition to the side yard, you have a very deep side yard, you can pull that addition uh, towards that um, um, side yard and uh, you know alleviate the massing uh, towards the side yard and, and get clearance to, this, to the uh, second floor windows that way. I, I agree, you don't want to lose the second floor windows uh, in terms of light and air and view. Um, um, maybe that current, uh, um, you know, I'd look at the hyphen, how the hyphen is detailed. I don't know that you need an overhang, per se, on the hyphen. Maybe that is just the box Steve. Um, and then the gable roof that you have there continues out over the, the porch. Um, or if it is offset, if you do the plan offset, then maybe you can start to look at a gambrel roof. So, you know, you, you've got some site that you can utilize to your advantage there. Maybe the breakfast room is right off the, the kitchen, and then there's uh, perhaps a connector piece to get you, uh, uh, from, you know, from your dining room and from the breakfast room across the back to, to an offset addition uh, that gets into that master bedroom. So I, I appreciate that we're trying to achieve one level living, makes sense, um, but the quality of that massing is not working, is not complimentary. It's just not working for that house. It'd be, it would be uh, night and day um, you would certainly have achieved that. You will certainly know where the historic structure is and where the addition starts, but it's, it's too abrupt, in my opinion, and needs to better uh, complement the uh, historic roof lines. Okay, Commissioner, one last question for me is um, you've referenced a couple times now, because we have a nice, sizable side lot moving the addition over. It's been quite some time be since I've been before the commission, but it used to be that you were never, you weren't allowed to protrude too much. It's a new commission. Okay. <laughs> it's a new, it's a new like commission. It's a new commission. <laughs> yeah, we, you know, if you, if you have hard and fast rules like that, um, yeah. in some cases they just, it just doesn't work. I, and I, I think in this case, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I'm sorry, Bob. No, no, I, I think in this case uh, there's room, there's room there. Um, and you said, I don't recall which side you said is not really visible that side uh this it's the side we're talking about. yeah the side we're talking about yeah you say it's not really and so in that case um you know i think it's perfectly i personally think it's appropriate to move move it over plus you're you're from the street uh what 70 feet or more right, to, right. to the back of the existing house yeah so you're sufficiently far from the street that it's this addition would not be um in your face i mean we recently recent, probably in the last year and a half, approved a similar situation in Kensington uh, where the entire addition, trying to do the same thing, an older home, uh, and the clients wanted one level living, no longer could get up to the second floor, so uh, the architect proposed a uh, addition that was offset uh, to the main house. Um, and but it was far enough back from the street that it wasn't uh, impactful to the streetscape or the landscaping mm -hmm. and so forth. So I, I would 
advise you to explore that option because you have it available. And, and, and the staff can um, help you with, yeah, with, the, with, with that property. I don't remember which one it was. It was, you know, my memory doesn't work as well as it used to, oh. as if it ever did. <laughs> well, one question, if I yes. may. Yeah, uh, Commissioner Pelletier. I'm trying to understand the concern. I'm sorry? So I'm trying to understand the concern on the you know, complementary nature of the addition, et cetera, the massing. Um, if I understand correctly, there is no major concern with the fact that it's a little bit separated to maintain the air and the, and the light in the window. It's after that separation that it feels like a bit flat uh, and when related to what is the existing house. It's not the separation itself. It's after that what is happening in the massing of Correct. what is. Correct. What is. Correct, yes. Commissioner Pelletier? Well, I think it's also the low sloping roof that is that separation between the two. How that's your act, like what material you're going to use, how that works out. I was just going to say if you made that more, if you brought it in more than you're bringing it in, you would have, you could have more pitch on that roof because you're not bringing it out as far, as far as that, that hyphen piece goes. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't have as many issues with the, with the addition. I, w w as uh, Commissioner Haynes does, but I, I hear him. I hear his mm -hmm. point. Um, I think just in looking at the, at the plan and looking at the elevations, if there was a real, a, a, everything came in and there was a real separation between the two pieces and you move the stair back so that it was part of the back piece and not part of the middle piece and you made a real distinct break between the old and the new, I think that would really work in your favor. I think right now part of the issue is that they're so, especially on this one side where you just have the continuous wall going, they, the back doesn't look like the front at all. It's, and you're, and it's, it's got this big wall in common that's all part of the same house, and yet you've got very different treatment of the back piece and the front piece. And I think the back piece could work a lot better if it was just completely separated in massing from the front. And so I think, in my opinion, if you, if you made that distinction more clear in some of the moves that you've made, it wouldn't it wouldn't be as as jarring that it that it has a low slung roof that it you know that it has different different types of of uh, treatments to things but right now it's it's kind of mushy as to what's old and what's new and you've got just these these incompatible things that don't really work together so I would encourage you to make a clear separation between the back and the front and I think that would help your case some so Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Um, look forward to seeing this project. You have a wonderful house, and we're hoping that we can help you make it even more wonderful. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Rebecca. I hope you're feeling better. <laughs> okay. Uh, where's my agenda? Here we go. Um, next item on the agenda are historic preservation tax credits, group number four. And I believe Michael is on the line. Is that correct? Yes, he is. Hi there. Hello. Yes, we have group four. And group four is for 20 applications of the 2022 uh, Historic Preservation Tax Credits. And it's for approximately $319,026.03. And we're asking for your approval. Thank you. And we, have, we still have more before we submit them, correct? Uh, yes, another another we are, one more batch, correct? I think. Oh, uh, or two. Probably a couple more batches. Okay. We're about halfway through. Oh, we're halfway through. Okay, right. Do I have a motion? This is Commissioner Doman. I move that we approve the uh, Group Four tax credits as uh, proposed. The twenty applicants for three hundred nineteen thousand twenty-six dollars. Commissioner Haynes, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. 
Approved. Um, our minutes. Uh, we actually deferred the April 26 minutes because no one had read them. So we have April 26 and May 10. Um, do I have a motion on the minutes? Um, I'll make a motion that uh, the HPC approve the minutes from the April 26 and May 10th meetings. I have a second. This is Commissioner Galway. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Are there any commission items? Are there any staff items? If not, thank you. Our meeting is adjourned. <laughs>